In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to find a product to sell on Amazon. Now, people on YouTube make this needlessly overcomplicated where it's actually surprisingly simple. If you're looking for a product to sell on Amazon in 2021, this is the only guide you'll ever need. Now, you have to be careful here. You don't want to make a mistake at this early stage. That could cost you one or two thousand dollars in lost inventory. But if you get it right, one product could make you many, many thousands of dollars. In fact, one of my products has made over a quarter of a million US dollars in sales so far, and it's still running. Now that's a revenue figure, by the way. So in terms of profit, it's between 100 to 120,000 US dollars. But that's just to give you an idea. So let's get straight to it. So I'm here on Amazon.com at the moment, and the first step in product research is to assess demand. You need to see sales volume in a particular niche of products. So let's scroll through the page here and randomly click on a product so I can show you what I mean. This product looks interesting. It's in the kitchen niche, which I know in general for new sellers is ungated, but I'll get back to that in just a minute as well. So this is a magnetic spice rack, simple looking product. So how do we know if there's enough demand in this niche? First thing we need to do is just type in what we think are the main keywords for this niche. It doesn't matter. Don't overcomplicate it. It doesn't matter exactly which words you type in because Amazon will give you an auto suggestion anyway. So let's say we were typing in magnetic and then spice. You can see Amazon automatically tell us most people there are searching for magnetic spice rack. That's going to be the highest volume search. So let's click on that. And there, within a few seconds, we found a niche. So our niche is magnetic spice rack. Now in this video, I'm not gonna cover in too much detail how to come up with product ideas. I'm gonna cover the much more important aspect of appraising an idea. Because you've seen that ideas you can get from anywhere. You can just look at Amazon bestsellers lists. And if you don't know how to do that, just Google in your own country, Amazon bestsellers. And then it will show you a list of the best selling products on Amazon in different categories. So as I'm looking through this niche now, what I need to know is how many sales are these listings making? It doesn't need to be perfect. And remember, sales fluctuate day by day anyway. So even if you get an estimate, that's more than good enough. But we need to get an idea. I need to know if these top listings here are making 10 sales a day or if they're making 1,000 sales a day. Why do I need to know that? Because I want to launch a product in a niche where customers actually want that type of product and are actively searching for it. Otherwise, I'm gonna to get too much of a low volume of sales. So if you're investing a thousand US dollars into a product, let's say, then you don't want to wait two years for your products to slowly sell out. You want to try and flip that money in just a month. So you wanna make sure that you get enough demand. How do we do that? For this, we need product research software. You can see here on this next page, uh, for another completely random product, I think this is a curtain rod, you can see product research software I'm using. I use X-Ray from Helium 10. In my opinion, in 2020 and going into 2021, Helium 10 is the best product for Amazon sellers. It's the best software. Now I've tried many different ones in my time selling on Amazon, so I can absolutely vouch for them. Now with X-Ray, what we're doing here is it actually looks through all of the listings on that page using a Chrome extension, and then it actually tells us how many sales each of these listings are making as an estimate over the last month. So for this random search I did, you can see here on the right hand side, revenue figures and also sales figures. So some of these listings were selling tens of thousands of products every single month. Okay, so does this product research software cost money? And the answer is yes, absolutely. But when you're trying to run a business, you need to invest in things like this. You need to invest in your infrastructure, in different types of software that will actually help you in your business. Good thing about Helium 10 is it will actually help you later down the road. So when you're actually creating your own Amazon listing, it will help you decide which keywords to put in your listing. Also, when you've actually launched your product and you're trying to get customers to provide reviews for you, Helium 10 helps there too, because they have an email follow-up tool. Basically, what that means is every time you make a sale of your product, the Helium 10 software will automatically send an email to your customer requesting that, asking for some feedback, asking how they're doing with their product, etc. So I highly recommend it. Now, there are free types of software out there that can do this product research section for you and give you an estimate of 
uh, sales figures and revenue figures. But my advice is to stay away from them and actually pay and invest in your business. This is not a massive expense as compared to how much you'll be spending when you're getting your initial inventory. In the link below this video, you can also use my discount codes. I have a special relationship with Helium 10 where as an affiliate for them, they can actually give our students extra discounts. If you use the link below, you'll see this page here where you can get 50% off your first month. Let's say you wanted to research your product, a month is more than enough to come up with a few different options. Or using the other code there, Sajad10, you can get 10% off long term from this software. So let's get back to our example of the spice wrap. So what we need to do here, once we've installed this software, you'll see it pop up as a Chrome extension, as you can see here in the top right hand corner, Helium 10. If you click on that button, you'll see these different options open and the one we're looking for is X-Ray, Amazon Product Research. So click on that when you're on the search page on Amazon. And it takes a few seconds to load up, but once it's loaded up, you can see here on the right hand side, sales figures and revenue figures. And if you actually hover over these code numbers on the left, which are called ASINs, they are kind of Amazon identifiers for different products, you can see pictures of the exact product. And these are all spice racks, and you do want to hover over just to make sure on the search page, it is what you are actually researching, because sometimes you get another kind of related product there, but you don't want to go by the numbers from that related product because that's not a spice rack, which is the one we're actually researching. So make sure you hover over just to be on the safe side to check because some of these listings are for the tins, some of them are for the racks. Next, once you've identified these, you need to scroll to the right and just make sure there's enough volume of sales. And I would say absolute minimum is 2000 US dollars. And I would say for one of these main kind of search keywords, you want to find at least three to five listings that have over $2,000 in revenue. The reason I look at the revenue figure more is because when you're actually investing in this product, it's the revenue that you're going for here. And you need to know whether you can actually afford to invest in this product. So as an example, this product I've hovered over is doing around 20,000 US dollars. So you might be thinking, well, that's great. I can invest my $1,000 in a similar product and make lots of sales. But hold on there. The big problem here is if you rank high in this particular niche, you have to be able to keep your products in stock. That's a requirement here on Amazon. And every time you go out of stock, it does kind of damage your ranking in the algorithm. Not massively, as some people mention on YouTube, you can get away with closing your listing and just waiting until you get more stock and then opening up the listing again, but it definitely does. Your key here is to keep your product in stock throughout the year. And the best way to do that is to actually go after a product that you can afford. So it's better if you have 1000 to invest to look at products that are doing 2000 to 3000 in revenue rather than 50,000 in revenue. If you have more than 10,000 US dollars to invest, then you can look at those kind of higher demand niches. So although the sales figures are good, what you'll find is in these niches where there's more of revenue, you actually find there's a little bit more competition, but also it takes more effort to launch the product. So to get on to this first page, you actually have to do more in terms of sponsor ads or any other types of promotions, and that will cost money. So if you had 10,000 to invest, you might spend a few thousand just getting that ranking up to get the ball rolling. Whereas if you're in a niche where it's only 2000 US dollars products you're going after, you don't need that much. You may only need a few hundred US dollars to get things up and running. So I hope that makes sense. So for this particular type of product or any other product which I'm researching, what I advise my students to do is to follow this very basic criteria, very simple, very basic. Don't overthink or overcomplicate it. So the product that you're going for needs to be at least $2,000 in revenue. And you want to look at that niche and find at least three to five products doing that $2,000 mark, just to make sure there's enough demand. Obviously, you want to make sure you can actually afford to stock this product. And I use the rule of thirds there. So if the product is doing 3,000 US dollars in sales, then usually it costs 1,000 US dollars to actually stock the product. So you can absolutely go after that. If you only have 300 or 400 US dollars to invest in this business, then you can't go after that. Now, I wouldn't say you can't sell on Amazon at all. You can still go after very, very low competition environments. 
so it's still possible, but it is a little bit tougher. So criteria A is the amount of revenue and criteria B is actually the selling price of the product. So if we have a look through here, we can see some products selling around, let's click on this one. So this is the $19.50 mark, so just under 20 US dollars. Now this is fine, but this would be around the minimum. So for example, if you're here in the UK, I would say aim for a product at least 10 pounds, but ideally over 15 pounds if possible as a selling price. I'll get onto why in just a minute. But if you're in the US, I would say around 20 US dollars and upwards. Now the big reason for that is with regards to fees. So let me just show you here very briefly. So if you can see here further down, using again Helium 10, excellent software, you've got a revenue calculator. And what Helium 10 will do is give you an estimate of the fees for selling this product. And you can see there the fees for this particular product are quite high, the Amazon fees, they're around $8, above $8 actually. And that will cut into your profit margin. So what you want to be careful of here is selling uh, products that are too cheap. If you're selling products for 10 US dollars or less, those are gonna cut into your margins, but also you need to do some sponsored ads to actually get the ball rolling and to continue to keep your product ranked well. And ads can easily cost anything from $1 to $3 for a click. But just going back onto the first page, the great thing is if you look through these products, some are selling for $20, some for 30 US dollars, what you'll find is the actual cost to promote will be identical despite the selling price and the fees will be almost identical. There will be a little bit more of a fee for a $30 product. So let me give you an example right now. You can see here the Amazon fees are $10 here. So ab about $2 higher. However, the seller is selling this product for over $10 more than the previous product I showed you. So I hope that makes complete sense. You want to game the system and the algorithm to your advantage here and you want to give yourself enough space to run these types of promotions. So those are the two main criteria. You don't need to overcomplicate it any more than that. I've seen here on YouTube, people showing very, very complicated spreadsheets. And then they're saying to research these types of products, you need to go into Etsy and Google and all of these other websites. You don't need to do any of that nonsense. I can promise you that. If you just stick to researching on Amazon, promoting your product via Amazon, you should have no issues at all. Now, if you pick a really bad product, then, no other amount of extra research is going to help you. So don't overcomplicate things. Those are the only two criteria you need. The other risk here is if you use other criteria here, uh, like people say, like you, you're kind of looking too much at all of these other aspects, for example, review velocities and all of this stuff. The problem with that is then if everybody else is doing the same thing, uh, you just find the same kind of handful of products, which is what you don't want either. You don't want to go into a product idea where you get lots and lots of people also jumping on board because that will create competition. So we've talked about main criteria A and B. The only other criteria, criteria C, is with regards to the weight of the product. Now this is an important one and I see many beginners miss this. So let's again just click on that Helium 10 extension and let me show you the weight of each of these products. So if you scroll further to the right, what you'll see here are dimensions of the product and then the weight there, usually that's in pounds. Now, you need to go for a light product. Now, even me now as a professional seller and I've sold a lot of products on Amazon, I still aim for light products where possible. And there are many reasons for that. But given how difficult this year has been in terms of kind of shipping, it's even more important now you need to find a light product because that's easy to airship. You don't want to get involved with sea shipping. It's very, very complicated. There's lots of extra hidden costs and also it takes forever. It can easily take three months for your product to arrive at Amazon. Whereas actually airship, it can literally take a matter of days. And I find personally that adds a lot of flexibility. Now you could argue that with the heavier products, there's less competition, perhaps, but there's so many millions and millions of products you can sell on any Amazon marketplace that there's still plenty of potential in the lighter ones, as long as, again, you pick a good product and you differentiate, and we'll get onto that in just a minute as well. So what are the maximum weights I look for? For me personally, I don't want anything more than around three to 400 grams. So let's just find out what that is kind of in ounces. So that's anywhere from around 10 ounces to around 14 ounces. So 0.6 to 0.8, 0.9 of one pound. So very light there. 
So all of these products here, all this type of spice rack, I personally wouldn't go near anyway because of the weight. And those are the only three criteria I use. By the way, as a thank you for all the support I've received for this channel, I'm actually giving away a free product software license with Helium 10 to one viewer. All I ask is that you comment below any helpful tips you've received from this video or just comment anything at all and you'll automatically enter this competition. And I'll announce the winner in the next video. So you'll get a completely free Helium 10 license. So we talked about step one, assess uh, demand and volume. And I've obviously talked about how much you need to invest. Let's talk about step two, which is assess your product potential. Now, this is a key one. Again, a lot of beginners miss. And this is how I do it and how I teach my students. So what you need to do, let's, let's for argument's sake, say we were going after this product because there's enough sales volume and we have a higher budget. And also we don't mind the extra kind of uh, weight of this product. I'll show you a different example in just a minute. Uh, to contrast, but let's stick on this one for now. So what we need to do here is scroll down. What I'm looking for uh, here is basically if there are newer listings actually making good revenue. And the way I do that, there's a few ways to do that, but you can actually click on the revenue button here and sort by revenue and then kind of scroll to the right. So when I scroll to the right, you can see their review count and also when the listing was created here. And you'll see here, if you scroll down, a few newer listings that were only launched in 2020 or 2019 with less reviews, anywhere from around 100, 150 reviews. Now, what I wanna make sure is with these products, like for example, this one that's doing 98 reviews, whether it's actually making decent revenue. And you can see here clearly it is 8,000 uh, sales per month on average. So why do I want to do that? Because I, I want to see proof that newer listings can get into this niche and take a bite off the pie. And also this kind of proves for me that it's not too competitive when it comes to actually ranking a product. Now we've got no idea how much this particular seller spent in actually promoting this product, but that's the first thing I want to see. So in this step two, assessing the potential of a product here in this niche, I want to check that first. Are there at least two or three listings that have, let's say, less than 100 reviews that are making good sales and were launched not too long ago in the last kind of 12 to 24 months. Again, don't overcomplicate it. But once you've seen that, that's the kind of first aspect of this. The second aspect is just a red flag thing. You want to make sure their listing is not being boosted right now. Now, what do I mean by boosted? I mean artificially making more sales by spending many, many thousands of dollars promoting this product right now. Now, generally you'll see this if the product's brand, brand new. So if only just been launched a few days or a few weeks ago. This particular one, if I'm scrolling to the right here, I can see it was launched a good few months ago. So it's very unlikely. And also if you look at the review velocity, basically what that means is the change in review count over the last 30 days. So they added an extra 24 reviews over the month, which is about normal considering they're selling around 300 to 400 per month. So it's, it's, it's normal, I would say. You wouldn't say they've suddenly got a flood of fake reviews. Now you can actually go onto the listing and look at it as well. But that's the second aspect. You want to make sure there's no red flags there is real numbers you're actually seeing. Again, that's why I say find a few listings that can actually prove that, that have less reviews, were launched in not too long ago and are already making good revenue. So this is a very good sign. The third aspect of assessing potential is I want to look at this spice rack and I want to see how it's different from those main spice racks that were selling forever and are doing, you know, uh, 50,000 upwards in revenue. Very likely with these newer listings, you'll find that they've developed some sort of differentiation. Either it's a different color, different style, different functionality. If it's an electronic product, more often than not, they've actually added newer functions. Like for example, your mobile phone that improves year on year. So that's what I'm looking for. So if I hover over, I'll see this particular one, you can see there, sorry, it's not that easy to see, but you can see it's a lot bigger. It's got many, many more compartments. You can hang the different types of cooking utensils. So it is different. You, there's kind of like a rack at the bottom as well. And the one below has got 650 reviews. So I'm not interested in that right now, but the one below that has got 95 reviews. Let's click on this one and open it in a new page. And what's the difference here? Well, you can see, again, you've got the racks there, but also this is made for, uh, it can be used in a refrigerator. Now that might be an extra option as compared to the old school listings that weren't made to be used in a fridge. 
So you're probably wondering, Sachet, why is this all important? The reason this is important is because when you come up with an idea, that's what you'll be doing. You'll be taking the existing niche and putting your own spin on it. You'll be doing something a little bit different that people actually want. And again, we'll get onto that in just a minute. So that's step two. That's actually looking at, is there potential for this product to be launched in this niche? And there clearly is. But based on my own criteria, I, I, I wouldn't go near it because it's too heavy. And for a beginner, it's too much to invest up front. So I'd stay away from this one. But for in terms of potential in this niche, yes, it's definitely there. And the other thing I would say is going back on this Helium 10, completely ignore everything else. So all of this stuff at the top, success stores, IQ scores and stuff like that. In my experience, none of that stuff is reliable at all. And again, you just don't need to overcomplicate it. You can clearly see in this niche, people are buying spice racks and that some people prefer different types of spice racks based on the functionality. That's proven here in this niche. There's nothing else you need to do really. So if this score in the top was 28 instead of 35 instead of 20, my opinion doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Step three, landed cost. So let's have a look at this uh, that we've just opened here, this particular listing. So we've talked already about profit margins. But what you need to do now, once you've found a potential product, is you need to find out how much it costs. And most people will go to Alibaba, and I highly recommend that as well, because very likely you'll find this same identical product. Now, I'm not gonna dive into that too much now. I'll cover that in a separate video. If you're interested, just comment below, and I'm more than happy to do a tutorial on that. But once you've found your product cost, and that must include shipping, that's what you'll enter here. So let's say our costs including shipping are $9. Well, this will then recalculate, giving me a net figure, net profit. These are the Amazon fees, 10. This is what I paid around nine or 10, and my profit is 10. Perfect, rule of thirds there, working. Very likely, this product, you will get a landed cost for nine or $10. That would be my best guess. And remember, landed costs is the cost of the product as well, including shipping to an Amazon fulfillment center. Now, what should you aim for here in step three in terms of a landed cost? Well, I advise my students to aim for around 100% ROI. What is ROI? Return on investment. So if I invested, well, let's just make it 10 for round figures. If I invested 10 here, I would want to get back net profit of around 10. So what's the minimum I would consider here? The minimum is 50%. So the minimum is if I invested uh, into a product that costs $10 per item, I want to get back net profit of $5 per item. That would be the minimum, 50%. But I prefer to aim for 100% upwards because that gives me a lot of space when it comes to promoting the product and also flipping my money again and again and making as much money as possible. So that's why you want to aim for high ROI products. And that's why in step one, I talked about demand because if there's enough demand in a niche and products are selling quickly, then your $1,000, let's say that you're investing, flips through much faster. So within 12 months, you may have gone through four product cycles and that $1,000 could have turned into $10,000 upwards rather than a slower selling product where that $1,000 takes forever to turn into $2,000. So I hope that makes sense. Step four of the five step process, differentiate. Now we've already touched on this. What you want to make sure is your product is different from the competition. Let's go back onto the main search here. So onto the main search, those products that were selling forever here with thousands of the reviews, let's go down, well not thousands, but let's say 8,000 reviews for Magnetic Spice Rack, they're a little bit more established, but you can see they're very, very basic. However, if I scroll further down, are those newer products that have less reviews? So let's find some of those. So you can see some here, 50 reviews, 98 reviews here. You can see they've clearly differentiated. They've made larger um, uh, spice racks with more shelving, and they've added some other extra features here. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with how to differentiate your product here, because we can, again, discuss that in a separate tutorial. That will take me a bit longer to actually go through. But let me give you a couple of quick tips here. So when you're differentiating your product, you might see here on YouTube, people way over complicate this. Look, you're not gonna become any kind of famous inventor here. You don't need to do that. Actually, a lot of the variations already exist. If you check with your supplier and check through the supplier catalogs, you'll find they already have many different colors, sizes, functionality, etc. It's for you to choose which one's best. 
You're not actually making anything or inventing anything yourself. So don't waste time with that. The other thing you hear a lot on YouTube is bundle your product. So with the spice rack, throwing something else in. So let me show you how that works. So let's say it was this product. If you scroll down, you'll see here products related to your item section, customers who searched all ultimately bought and also sometimes frequently bought together. So what you can do is you can add, for example, with your rack, you can add spice tins. Now you can choose to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And that is a valid way of differentiating your products. Yours comes more as a package, but I don't like to do that. Personally, I don't bundle much at all. Don't overcomplicate it. You can easily just stick to the main product and do very well on it, but that is an option for you. So how else can you actually differentiate? Well, the other thing you can do is scroll down to reviews and have a quick look at what people liked and didn't like about this product. So what you can do here is just click on customer reviews. So what you can do here at the bottom is just go more recent. That way you're more likely to kind of get real reviews rather than fake reviews, to be honest with you. And just anything that is less than five stars. Now there's a way in Helium 10 to do this as well to kind of filter through. Again, I'll discuss that in a separate video, but here you can actually have a look at some of the negative reviews, the one star, two star reviews, and just see what the issues actually were. And you can read through them. So is there some issue with the magnet or the motor or whatever else? And you can keep that in mind when you're selecting your uh, magnetic spice rack from your supplier. You can keep in mind the issues customers had because you want to give obviously a good customer experience. That's what Amazon want. But you don't, again, you don't have, a, have to overcomplicate this. I just talked about James Dyson. So let's talk about uh, very briefly a Dyson hairdryer. So this is a fantastic product. My wife has this product. And these, these are great and they sell for a, a lot of money and Dyson as a company have spent uh, millions of pounds, obviously researching this product, developing this product, etc. However, you'll get many, many Chinese cheap and cheerful versions of this type of product. You'll see here the designs are not exact copies, but almost. And a lot of these sellers are doing perfectly fine selling their mimic product. Remember, you have to be very careful that it's not copied to the point where you're infringing on somebody else's patent or copyright. And I'll get to, to that in just a minute as well. But you can perfectly sell those products. In fact, let's have a look at volume here of sales. So you can see that Dyson, no surprise at the top, $355,000 per month. But some of these other uh, cheap and cheerful options, so you can see like this one here, uh, very, very kind of similar design here. But I mean, these are selling for $20,000, $30,000 in revenue per month. And they, they haven't invented that themselves. So you can easily pick up similar types of hair dryers with a similar look and style. And people want that too. Not everybody has 300 or 400 US dollars to afford on a hairdryer. So I hope that makes sense. So in a nutshell, differentiate slightly, but don't reinvent the wheel. You do not need to. And again, if you're interested in getting a free Helium 10 license, just comment below and you'll be automatically entered into the competition. So step five of this simple five step process is to watch out for red flags. That's all. That's all you have to do in this final step. So what do I mean by red flags? Well, let's discuss that right now. So I have over here a guide. This is for restricted products on amazon.com. These products are restricted in some way in some of these niches, you're just not allowed to sell the product. It's for you to do your due diligence there to make sure there are no issues selling the product. Just because you see the product selling on Amazon doesn't necessarily 100% mean that you can actually sell the product or whether you in particular can sell the product. So what do I mean by that? So if the product's not restricted or uh, as you can see here, prohibited. So this is again for the US, there are certain types of products that are prohibited to sell, absolutely. So just because you see one or two listings with zero reviews, a few reviews, trying to flog a few of these items, that doesn't mean you should follow suit. The other thing you need to check is whether you in particular as a beginner seller or existing seller can sell. So there you need to check your category product and content restrictions. So I'll give you an example page here. This applies to in the UK. So as a brand new seller, there are certain categories that you're not allowed to sell in. So what you need to do for those categories is get extra approval. So often I get asked, well, Sajad, how can I quickly do that? What forms do they need? Blah, blah, blah. As a beginner, don't bother selling in a restricted category. Just focus on those categories that are open to new sellers. There are plenty of those with millions of products that you could choose from. For example, home and kitchen, sports, outdoors, electronic products, toys, games, for a lot of new sellers, those are ungated as well. Not always in quarter four, but sometimes. Also office, stationary supplies, etc. The list is endless. 
concentrate on those first. In the future, if you're desperate to get into a niche, for example, let's say beauty or ointments or something like that, then yes, get that extra approval. Also, just a word of warning, even if you're a beginner and you do all of the forms, Amazon usually want you to have been selling for at least a few months before you can get ungated. Now, that's not set in stone anywhere or written down anywhere, but that's just my own experience and that of other experienced sellers. So as a complete beginner, it's very difficult to get ungated immediately. Not impossible though. What are the red flags? So that's category, that's restricted products. So let's say you've, you're cleared there. The other thing you need to do is check for seasonality. So for example, here I've got wireless uh, charger here on amazon.com. Now, what, what, are, what do I mean by seasonality? Well, for certain products, for example, let's say gardening products, they sell really well in certain months of the year. Now as a beginner, again, you don't want that. When you're more advanced, you can do that. For example, in quarter four, I sell a lot of Christmas related products like Christmas decoration. I'm more experienced, I can manage my stock uh, better and I have enough cash flow to be able to take those types of risks. But you don't want to do that. You don't want to get tied up with a product and then eventually when it goes live, it's a low demand time of year. Avoid that. So how do you check? Many ways you can do it. The simplest one is just check on Google Trends. This takes you a few seconds, so just type in onto Google Trends wireless charger and you can see here over the year, you can see recently we've been peaking in terms of interest in this product, which makes sense because obviously towards Christmas it might be used as a gift, etc. Best thing to do is zoom out as much as possible. Uh, so let's say five years uh, in the first instance and then you can see here clear peaks and troughs. Where are these peaks? They tend to be around uh, November, December time. That's just something to note there. So if you're doing research for wireless charger right now and we are in December 2020, then very likely you're going to see overinflated figures. So this might not be good a good demand product in January, February, March, etc. Doesn't mean you don't sell it, just means you need to be aware of that. For other products on Amazon, let's for example type in the spice rack that we were talking about. So you can see here, I've just typed in spice rack past five years. You can see it's a lot more consistent, it's a lot more sideways in terms of trend and generally the trend actually in the last year or so it's kind of cool to see it's going up. So demand for this product is slightly increasing over uh, time, which is nice as well to see in a particular niche. You don't want to see it like going massively in the other direction. But again, you don't need to overanalyze this. Just kind of rule out that it's not a seasonal product. Final part of the red flag section is just to kind of rule out that there's no uh, specific kind of uh, patents or trademarks, copyrights with a particular product you're going after. Often what you see on Amazon is a very popular product like a Dyson dryer and then other people trying to copy and imitate that product. Now you might get away with it for a month or two but eventually the uh, brand holder or the person with the patent will say you're infringing on their listing. Now you don't want that at all. So for example, here in Europe, I use the site EUIPO to actually check that. And you can just check that with text, for example. So I did a quick uh, search for Dyson and you can see here lots and lots of entries. So you need to have a look through these as well. You can of course get a patent lawyer and things like that, but most products that you'll be looking for as an FBA seller on Amazon, you don't need to go into this depth necessarily. Usually it's obvious whether a product is actually imitating an existing well-known branded product. So that's it for red flags. So now I've covered them. Why is this method very simple? Well, let's do wireless charger. So we've, we've made sure we're typing in wireless and then CHA. Uh, so wireless charger or wireless charger pad, that is the most common kind of search on Amazon. Amazon is suggesting that to me. So let's go quickly through the five steps right now here. So first thing we need to do, use our Chrome extension to see how many sales these various listings are making. And you can see the revenue figures are massive here, so well into the hundreds of thousands. So is there enough demand? Yes, easy. And also the weights are like it. These can easily be air shipped. That's also a tick there. And then the other criteria, are they selling for at least kind of 15 to $20? You can see here with the price, yes, there are some cheaper ones, but generally you can aim for maybe a more advanced version of this that is 20 to $30, no problem. So this is no problem when it comes to demand. Now, obviously as a beginner seller, will you be able to stock this product and promote it enough? I would say no. So that's why you'd be careful here. But let's go on to the other steps here. So if we click on one of these listings, you'll see uh, very quickly, because you can get these quite cheap, you'll see for a $20 listing like this one here, I have to double check here the landed cost, but very likely the fees are so low, very likely we'll be able to make good profit on that figure. Even if our product costs say uh, $9, we'd still be fine in terms of net. So well over, uh, kind of double there. 
So we're fine in terms of landed cost. Also, is there potential in this niche? For that, if I just scroll down to some of those listings that have less reviews, like there's one here with just 22 reviews and you know they're, they're making enough sales, so they're already making like 20,000 sales. So you have to say immediately, there is enough potential here as a new seller. And the one I just hovered over there, you can see it's completely white. It looks like almost like a, a an Apple trackpad. So it looks really cool there. So that's how they've differentiated. So I've proven there that this is definitely, they've differentiated that well and that's why it's selling. And that leads me on to step four, differentiate. Well, this is one of the ways you can do it. Just make it very basic by color, by the uh, charge time, by the uh, pow the power of the magnets, etc. Many ways you can actually do this. You can bundle if you wanted to and throw other things in. You can see this one. You can potentially bundle and throw other things in. I'm sure some of these listings have actually bundled uh, other stuff into a kind of charging station there. And finally, red flags. Well, you know, is there any well-known, if you go right back to the top again, is there any well-known kind of brand that invented the wireless charger that everybody's copying? And you can see here, you know, you could do your checks, but very unlikely, especially if you're seeing the main sellers right at the top, they're all Chinese sellers. Very unlikely that you'll have problems in this particular niche with this type of shape of product. So again, no need for any fancy spreadsheets. Get started now with your research. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, please click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. I'm going to be doing more uh, tutorials, especially advanced ones on product research here on this channel. And I'll also show you how to differentiate in depth, how to list your product, etc. Also, if you want my Helium 10 discount code, it is in the first link in the description below. Thanks for listening and I'll see you all in the next one.